All right, everyone. Uh, we're gonna be modding the Omega kit today. Um, it's gonna go in my Exus, which I got, just got. Jacob is off camera uh, opening that. Fiddly with you. Uh, so you're gonna hear some of that, but we're gonna have to make some cuts. And I wanna practice first on a long shot shell so I don't like permanently fuck up the Exus shell. Um, I say we should go straight to the Exus shell. No, wait. So live on the job, Tucker. What we have to do first is remove this area right here. Uh, that right there, so we can move the bolt sled back we further. Should, we should probably fully explain what we want to do. Because basically the Omega kit looks absolutely amazing <laughs> with the red anodized metal, but it's a pusher breech that's designed for half length. And the reason for that, if I can get this in, the bolt sled only comes back to about this far. And as you can see, the pusher is set up there for their middle center magazines such as a talon or whatnot and a full length dart just won't fit and so what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and extend how far back the bolt sled can go by cutting the shell and then cutting the slot and then we're going to have to do work on the plunger rod in order to make it shorter and from my rough ideas i don't think we're going to be able to use this spring guide we're going to have to make a homemade one using the shell but we're gonna experiment and see and that's another reason why we're doing this with a long shot shell just because if it, it gets to be too much work and we don't want to continue with it Tucker can just put the Omega kit in his Exodus and fire Stephens. Which is fine because as you guys know I've gotten some katana mags Talons. or talon mags. I'm God. getting katana mags. Yeah. Or I'm getting a katana. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah we're gonna start with cutting this this little guy right there. Oh, shit, dude, should I mod my katana to the full length? How would you? <laughs> <laughs> I cut it perfectly down the middle and just extend it. <laughs> ah, that's so rough. Just how everyone would take uh, full length mags to feed half length, I do the opposite. <laughs> Here if you like. Mm. Oh, there's so many screws. Oh, that's cool. That screws in upside down. No. <laughs> I was going through and I put the screw over it and I'm like, that didn't feel right. <laughs> Luckily, all these screws are like larger than the Nerf screws. Mm -hmm. So, easy to take out the screwdriver. Also, looks like the. Oh, it's this bit hitting on that part of the shell. Oh. This part of the shell right here mm -hmm. that comes, that recesses down right here. That's what it is. That's what I have to go to. I mean, it's not, because this, what we're trying to do is make it so that this comes all the way back to there, which is almost done. All right. <laughs> all right, take it back. That's going to have to go. That's going to be hard to cut, though. You're going to have to use the Dremel and put it in between those and drill that. Luckily, though, Exodus Shell does not have those recessed bits. Correct. Right. Once I get this open, you're actually going to see that. All right, I'm it's gonna not wanting to come apart. <laughs> my janky Dremel that you have to press the speed dial to make it go. Hold on, Chicago Electric, give them the credit they deserve. <laughs> Chicago Electric Power Tools, <laughs> pretty good, but I if you don't have a, a, a rotary tool, just get a Dremel. This one is, is a little Shoddy finicky. It, <laughs> finicky? It's finicky. You Fuck. use two hands in order to do it? <laughs> Holding you together. Go in, you four. So Tucker bought this ex Zeus off of what Facebook or Reddit? Facebook. Somewhere, and he got a, it was a really nice deal and whatnot. And it's still a decent shell that's gonna be used. But the man cut this jam door out, which is just really small, not super clean in my opinion. And just there's a bunch of nicks on the inside, which is weird. I don't know what he did to it, but it's open now, so we can look at that. That's cool. Like he dremeled out, he dremeled out right here, which would only unless I don't, I don't fully know that much about the X Zeus, so maybe you have to do that in order to use like worker kits in it, which is maybe what he was trying to do. Fuck! It's far. 
It's fine. It's metal. It's metal. It's fun. It's just a little dirt. Ooh. No. Nothing. You don't need to see that. It's the tiniest of little scraps. God. It's ruined. We're going to hit the concrete dead on. Yeah. You want, it just won't. Is it plugged in? Yes, it's plugged in. It's plugged in? It's plugged in. It like slips out a little bit, but it's plugged in. It's plugged in. Yeah, it's broken. That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> well, how am I supposed to do that? I don't know. No offense, Jet. The idea behind this threaded rear cap is all well and good, and I do like. I do like the ability that these just clip together over the plunger rod, but we don't plan on using them, and they're cool, but meh. This is really cool, though. I love this. Really beautiful. Oh. You can keep trying with that. It's not going to work. <laughs> I don't know what else to use. An actual Dremel. I don't have a Dremel, though. Road trip. <laughs> uh, so this is officially broken. So there's gonna, we're just gonna run to Lowe's really fast and get one, and we'll be back in continuing the video. All right, we're here at Lowe's getting my new Dremel. If you look closely, you can see Jacob right there. Say hi to the people, Jacob. It's a Roomba for your lawn. <laughs> it's pretty cool, but it's like sixteen hundred dollars. <laughs> Everyday low price. Sure. Okay. I haven't either. Basically, set up the same, except reverse. <laughs> uh, no. Wait. Usually, this would be on like the right side of the store. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. Well, where's Tool World? There's Tool World. Ah, it's right across from the lighting section, like the other one. Well, from the Delaware, it goes all the way across the majority of the current store. Correct. It goes from the registers to the other side. Look, the restroom's right next to Tool World as well. Perfect. I can go to <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, they have dyes here. That's neat. Dyes. They're used for like the machining. Alex, the Alex Steele. Uh, what's it called? Alex Steele. Blue dye them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where are his rotary tools? Oscillating tools, Dremel oh. tools, aisle 71. <laughs> the other one's on the wall. It's got its own, like, fancy sign. Is this the one that you have? Uh, yeah. The Dremel 200? That's the one that I got. Would you recommend? Yeah, it works well. Okay. Is this the cheapest one? No. Uh, but yeah, on this, you can use all the fancy bits that you want. Does uh, it come with I'll, those? Uh, yeah, it comes with these. At least yeah. it should. Yeah. 15 accessories. Cool. It comes with those, and uh, you can set it to low and high and off what more do you need off slow fast i'll tell you uh i never used slow at all <laughs> slow so slow on yours Yo, wow. I'm slow on yours dude. buy this get that free buy a dremel 28 piece 3000 and get a cutting kit 11 piece easy lock cutting kit for free oh what's dremel micro why is it such a great number. Why is there a light behind it? It's such like a dramatic looking photo. It's so much more expensive. It's a cordless one though. If that would work. It would be really cool because I'm going to need to plug it in. It's it's Dremel time. No longer will we be a Chicago electric man. I don't know if that's right. That doesn't seem like the right price. 
I just bought the Dremel. Uh, I had the guy come over and fix the price because, I mean, shit, I, anyone would buy a Dremel for a dollar. But always be honest, people, stealing is bad. I don't know what that keyed up as. I don't know, it was like some like wire or something. Alright guys, we're back from Lowe's. You saw, we got the Dremel. Um, this is Jacob's laptop. He's going to be editing videos while I'm doing this. But I'm just going to do a short little like unboxing video of my new Dremel. And then we'll get back to the mods. What do you mean, Kevin? <laughs> All righty, here's my new Dremel. Very nice. Um, here's some instruction booklets, but we don't need that. I've used Jacobs before. That's a very hefty thing for something with a switch. Sharpen my knives. Look at all that goodness. So this is this is what we were talking about with the knife sharpener. Oh, there's a little wrench. That's cute. Back to the mods. As you can see, fucking works like a dream. I'm gonna put on one of those like other bits that can fit in there nicer. Drill bit. Yeah. So I'm using this diamond that I don't really know what its original use is. But I'm gonna Dremel out in this little track here, the, the shell part. As we can see, the bolt slit and the breech will now go back far enough. If we had this bar in place, it will keep it will keep the dart. Why isn't that going in where it needs to go? There we go. It'll keep the dart from going up too high. And then when we push this back forward, as you can see, I had the full length dart. Beautiful. Perfect. Part one done. So as you guys saw, we've now been able to move the bolt slit back far enough so it can feed full lengths. Now we need to, what is it, make it work with the plunger tubing. So we need to move the plunger tube back past the spring rest uh, area right here, um, probably to where these pegs are. And let's let's go ahead and do that. Oh, fine. <laughs> Shit. 
so annoying when you build something really cool and then some guy just comes in with just eh, actually none of this is at all necessary. <laughs> actually, you wasted all of your time. <laughs> yeah, you wasted all your resources and time and you're making a stupid video that no one needs to see because this is actually just a dumb thing to make. Yeah, because you can actually just go online and spend lots of money to yeah. get the same thing. Yeah, you buy a worker prophecy kit for like $60 when... But as you guys hopefully know by now, third party products aren't really our thing. We're only just now getting into them because our birthdays have are, are coming up and have gone. So we're we're gonna we have lots of new things to show you guys. So that the plunger tube is flush up against this. So literally, you just have to sand the top bit mm -hmm. because currently it's sitting up there at the top one. Yeah. And if you bring it back to just there, A, that'll give you a nice flat plane to work with mm -hmm. for the rest of the mod, but also I feel like that will be far enough. The main thing, you just have to make it so it's not too far so that this O ring will stay in. The yeah, line. that's what I'm that's trying to do. Thing. All right, I'm using a sanding bit now just to clean up these cuts that I made with the pliers. A proof of concept. Oh, fuck yeah. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's going to be beautiful. Um, let me see if I can fix that. There we go. All right. As you can see, it fits in the mag, and the pusher is behind the dart, so it's able to move the dart in and out, feed the feed from a mag, and plunger tube, everything is in place. And let's see, that should be everything we need to do, unless I'm forgetting something, and we could move on to the Exus. Um, oh, we have to cut down the plunger rod. What are you saying? We have to cut down the plunger rod. Correct. That's going to be the most crucial part, in my opinion. Let's see. For a couple reasons. For one, cutting carbon fiber, which is such a disgrace. I know. But additionally, that's how it catches. So, so now, as you've probably guessed from us just talking, we're cutting this down, but we're trying to figure out how much we have to cut it down by. So we have to take all of this, this beauty, apart. All right. I'd say. Mm-hmm. Because there it's in the, the caught position. Mm-hmm. Pushing all the way forward. Caught. Cutting down. So as you can see, it's currently a little spaced. Leave a little bit of a gap right there. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Yeah. We we'll leave that little bit of a gap, and then see 
now I don't know how you just like eyeball it I guess I don't know uh, you can measure that you could you could where's the where's the nut so I need to measure Four and three eighths. Uh, measure it and cut it. Yeah, guys. Uh, if all the stuff Jacob's selling isn't gone by the time this video is up, why don't you head on over to uh, Nerf Mollers Welcome or R slash Nerf Exchange. Nerf Buy Sell Trade on Facebook. Go there. Um, go to our Instagram. Hopefully, Jacob will post on there too. Let's make the cut. So I've cut down the plunger rod about half an inch. Um, let's see how it is. Check it. Let's see. I'm checking it. You're gonna have to hold that. How far back do you need to go? That much. All right, so yeah, you can look how much you want to cut it down more. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. If I put a full length dart in the most rear position, it will still feed, and the blaster is in the primed position, which is perfect. So I can push this forward, that can seal against there, and I can eat that <laughs> far forward as I can, and as you can see, the dart got pushed out. My uh, pushing of the plunger rod is nowhere near as powerful as that 16 kg will be but 
as a proof of concept. I'm proud of it, and I'm more than confident enough to move on to the extra shell, purely because I have no gamble in the thing, and I have no wagering, nothing. Except for maybe being wrong. That the Omega Kid can't be full length. Which it looks like it can. Which, proof of concept, it totally fed and did, did the thing. We just needs working around to make it actually work in practice because we need to extend the slot. We need to actually build an actual spring rest for it. We need to actually build something to hold the plunger tube in where it needs to go, which is right here. Now that I think about it, I don't actually know how we're going to do that. Something to hold the plunger tube in place. Epoxy putty might work, but my issue is this dang plunger rod. You're going to need a better o-ring for this because this o-ring is not the right one whatsoever. It's too tight in the plunger tube. We need something thinner in diameter, but also same like radius. Less girth, same diameter is what I should do. Okay. Because basically, with this going back as far that it is, having it go back all the way to where it's touching the plunder tube only leaves a couple options for where we can apply some reinforcements to keep the plunder tube in place. My idea is from the bottom here, but that's going to make taking the bolt slide in and out hard. We could put something we could put epoxy putty uh, right in front of the lip but that would cut down if the bolt slide is able to come back to all the way flush with the plunger tube on my retaliator the way I solved this issue was I put hot glue over the front because my bolt sleds that I use in my homemade, homemade internals are not bigger than the plunger tube so I can put hot glue flush to them and it won't let the plunger tube go forward